Welcome to our first video in the series covering LiDAR visualization using free and open source software. My name's Kevin and I'm going to do my best to teach you guys uh, my method uh, for working with LiDAR data and processing it into a form that's usable. So in this first video we're going to cover uh, just a general software overview as well as some common data sources. Uh, I'm located in the United States, and so mainly that's where I'm gonna focus, but most countries have their own uh, GIS web portal with uh, some amount of data. It just depends where you are in the world, what resources you have. So let's dive right in. Uh, the main software we're gonna be working with today is QGIS. QGIS is a very powerful free and open source GIS software. Um, I recommend downloading the latest long-term release, and that's 3.3 uh, something. It's Prisren. Um, you can find this very easily. Just Google, go on Google, QGIS, be the top hit, and you can download right here, long-term release. Um, I'm not going to walk you through how to download all these individual softwares. Um, that's been covered in many different videos by much better presenters than myself. Um, so just uh, to get started, um, you're definitely going to want to download QGIS. And like I said, I recommend the long-term release, not necessarily the latest release. The long-term release will be more stable. Um, I've had good luck with the latest releases as well. Uh, but we have enough functionality in the long-term release that it's not really necessary. Um, so let's uh, click on the icon here and see what you get. And uh, I'll be doing all of this in real time. This won't be a polished edited video. This is my first time making a YouTube video and uh, figuring out the video editing software. So we'll just kind of learn as we go here. Um, this is QGIS. Um, it has Let's just start a new project here. Um, this is our viewing window. You can see here it's blank. Um, so one of the first things we're going to want is a base map. So that would be, uh, you can imagine what you see when you're looking on Google Earth. That is a base map. There's different types of base maps. Uh, OpenStreetMap is one example. Um, but we, or I personally, like uh, Google Satellite View. So how can we get that view into QGIS um, so that we can use it uh, for viewing. Um, so QGIS has built-in functions, which you can see here in the processing toolbox. I have all these tools. It actually has uh, other GIS programs built into it, such as Grass, uh, Saga. Um, you can even download different tools. Um, these tools um, that you add are called plugins. So if you go up here to plugins, you can do manage and install plugins. And you're able to uh, search under all, you can search for a plugin and download it. Some are as simple as that. You just download the plugin and it works. Others have dependencies, so there'll be other plugins you have to download to make it work. Or you might have to download the software uh, from the their website and place it in the correct folder uh, in relation to QGIS in order to use it. Uh, examples of those types would be LAS tools and white box tools, which is one of my favorites. Um, those uh, are a little more involved, but as I said earlier, uh, there have been plenty of other videos made uh, walking through that process, so I'm not going to cover that today. It would take forever because there's people that are much better with computers than I am in explaining that process. But for today, we're just going to go over what plugins you will specifically need uh, to do the process that I'm going to outline in the later videos. So uh, one of the most important, I believe, is a plugin called Quick Map Services. And once you download it, this is one of the ones that you just download. Um, you'll need to add the uh, expanded service provider pack. Uh, if you Google this, it, it should come up. It, it's a pretty easy thing. You just check a box. So then now I can go under Quick Map Services. It's been added to my bar. And you can see under there I have all these options. So I have USGS, OpenStreetMap, Waze, uh, Bing, all kinds of options. So for now I'm just going to say I want Google Satellite. 
So now magically, I have added a base map. Um, you can see here this looks extremely distorted and that's because of another basic setting that I have right now and that is my coordinate reference system. So I currently have this set as a uh, looks like UTM zone 15 north that's that's where I live here in Missouri. Um, I won't go into detail about coordinate reference systems. Um, if you're in the US or I guess anywhere in the world I would I guess recommend first probably uh, something UTM is usually usually going to work. Um, but you can kind of view what coordinate reference system the data you're going to get is in and then generally I like to work in that system um, to avoid having to reproject. But for now, just understand that I have this in uh, UTM zone 15 north, that's EPSIG 6344, that's what you can see down here in this corner. And if I wanted to change this, I can click on this box, and I can search and choose a different coordinate reference system. You can see some of my uh, recently used ones here uh, that I've used for projects in the past. So we'll just close out of that. Zooming in here, you can see this is just standard Google satellite view. This is actually streaming from Google through QGIS. It's it's pretty fantastic. So that's QGIS. Um, as far as plugins, you will need Quick Map Services for sure. That's a very important one. Um, and then the most important for what we're going to do is this Open LiDAR Toolbox. This is a really great program, uh, I believe it was developed in uh, Slovakia or Croatia, some Eastern European country. Uh, the author is really great. Um, he has responded to a couple of my emails in the past, and I just find it's a really fantastic program for uh, what we want to accomplish. Um, this is a plugin that has dependencies. Um, those would be the Relief Visualization Toolbox, Terrain Shading, and White Box Tools, as well as, uh, I believe, LAS Tools as well. Um, you should be able to find a guide. It, it'll, if, when you go to download this, uh, this plugin, I'll tell you it has dependencies. Some it'll be able to download directly really easy. Others, like White Box Tools and LAS Tools, you will have to download from uh, their respective websites. It's a little bit of a process, but it's not that complicated. I was able to figure it out. I'm sure with this information, you'll be able to Google the process. There's lots of guides that'll walk you right through this. Um, in these newer versions of QGIS, we actually have options uh, to uh, work directly with point clouds using Poodle, which is uh, the, the point cloud engine uh, behind this. Um, I still, for, for certain functions, I still prefer to use another software, which we're going to cover now, and that is Cloud Compare. If you don't want to use Cloud Compare, you absolutely don't have to. Um, it is possible to do all these steps within QGIS. Um, I just kind of like the to be able to visualize and manipulate the, the data ahead of time. I find it's easier in Cloud Compare. And I use it for other things uh, for my job or in general life. So I already have it on my complete computer. I like Cloud Compare, and so I've stuck with it. So I'm going to show you uh, that method using Cloud Compare. But once you learn these principles, you should be able to uh, accomplish the same goal purely in QGIS if that's what you want. All right, so now we've covered some softwares and uh, what you'll need. So now you need data. So in the US, the probably the number one uh, source I use would be the USGS. Um, USGS.gov, you can go to the, this national map page and they have all kinds of options. You can get old topo maps, which I have pulled up here, which is really cool. It's just a big, big map of the US. You can click a spot. I've clicked this spot and I have all these options for maps. These are topographic maps going back to 1922 in various scales and then all the way up to the present day. Um, you can download them. Uh, most if not all of them are geo-referenced so once you download this either geotiff or geo pdf file you can open this in QGIS and it will be in the correct place on the earth at the correct scale. So pretty sweet. And then the other one 
just click back here. I'll go to the data download application and launch that. And this is where we're going to download our LiDAR data. You could also utilize uh, USGS Earth Explorer for this, uh, but that's not my preference. So I prefer uh, this application to download my, my data, but you can choose whichever is best for you. And I'm currently staying in beautiful Cape Girardeau. Um, so we're just gonna pick a place here these are some interesting hills. And so what we want to do is first we're going to choose our area of interest. This area looks vaguely interesting. So I'm going to choose extent here. You could also choose a point or create a polygon to choose the areas where you want to search for data. I've chosen extent, which is very easy. I can just click drag this box, unclick, and it has selected my box. So I now I need to select what products I want. What I'm looking for is elevation source data. You can see here it's got LIDA, uh, IFSAR. So we'll just select that. And it's already selected LIDAR point cloud because I've used this earlier today. So that's the data format that I would like. This is the extent that I've chosen. So now we'll search products. And now these are all the LiDAR tiles that are available for this area. You can see it's gonna show a, 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 like a thumbprint on the ground of where they're located. So these four boxes, sometimes you'll have multiple years worth of data. Um, you can usually I choose the most recent because usually that has the the highest density of points and a lot of times I want the most recent data, but you could choose an older data set you can uh, I try not to mix different surveys um, just because if you get some variability in your uh, your uh, elevation uh, it can cause some weird weird noise effects. Uh, so generally I try not to mix multiple years. These are all the same year though. And so all I would do is click download link and it starts downloading. Um, so I would click all four of these to gain my whole area of interest. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and make you wait for that to download though because I am on hotel Wi-Fi and it is incredibly slow. So I have already downloaded a data set and I will show you how we begin to process it in the second video.